Today we're taking a look at two hummingbirds from Gibson that are not the traditional ones, the faded satin finished mahogany back and side hummingbird versus the Rosewood Studio. Which one should you pick? Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. Or buy these guitars. They're both cool guitars. They're Gibsons. And they're increasingly becoming hard to come by, as we were talking about uh, off the air earlier today. Yeah. Yeah, we have two different hummingbirds. We don't have the hummingbird standard, um, and that was kind of the inspiration for doing this because yeah. we have a few other options. So if you're looking for a hummingbird, there's not just one. There are several, and I think these are both compelling options and something a little different. So Something a little different. So let's talk about what we've got. I have in my lap the Gibson Hummingbird Studio Rosewood. Uh, which is very cool. That whole studio line of gu guitars, which we'll talk a little bit about, I think are very cool. And then you've got the new, I hate the name, Faded, but Faded, satin yeah. finished Hummingbird. Yeah, more or less new. We've looked at the J35 and the J45, and um, we have the Hummingbird now, which was, you know, release. The, the Gibson new releases kind of fly under the radar a little bit. They don't make a huge amount of noise. But yeah, this is basically your original collection Hummingbird satin. Hummingbird they satin. It, they call it faded, but <laughs> satin, yeah. We're gonna call them satin instead yeah. of faded. Um, well, very cool. So let's talk a little bit about what they are. So we'll start with the studio. So yeah. the studio represents a line within the modern collection from Gibson in their acoustic guitars. And there are a number of studio models that are available. There's a, like a J200 mm -hmm. uh, studio, which we've got. Um, and there's two versions of that, right? There's the Rosewood and the Walnut? Yeah. And they have uh, L00 Studio Rosewood. Mm -hmm. they, they've got, you know, it's other wood options, right. basically. And what's interesting about that to me is that they've basically taken these traditional guitars and given them the studio moniker and said, Rosewood, that's what you want in the studio. I'm like, yeah. well, okay. And I, I'm down for that for whatever reason because outside of that, the only Rosewood guitars you see are like the songwriters. Songwriter, yeah. So evidently, if you're a songwriter or you're going to be in the studio, Gibson says you need Rosewood and the rest of the time it's mahogany or maple. Yeah. So if you're not a songwriter, you just cover stuff, you don't, you don't, you don't need that. You don't need Rosewood. And if, you, uh, if you're going to busk all day and you'll never be in the studio, you don't need Rosewood. I don't know, for I whatever really, reason. I really like how the same company calls Studio um, their entry-level electric guitars, like yeah. that are, you know, their entry American-made Gibson electric guitars are Studios, and they are significantly less than the, you know, standard models. These, not so much. No. These are still... There's some naming convention issues going on at Gibson. Like, yeah. the, the reason we don't like Faded is because Faded was previously used for very, very low-priced, yeah. like Gibson Les Pauls. Basically, you get a high-end Epiphone or the Faded series Gibson for about the same money. So I don't... I just... And there's nothing Faded. Yeah. It's just satin. So, it's just satin. But I digress. It's not relict in any way. It's not age. <laughs> it's a brand new guitar with a satin finish. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. if you saw our recent Martin video, they just call it the D28 Satin. Yeah. Not faded. But yeah. this one's faded, and it's whatever. So naming conventions aside, I digress. So I like this because outside of the songwriter, you're getting the square shoulder dreadnought hummingbird um, with rosewood body, but some of the appointments that are more in line with the hummingbird series. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like the songwriter series a lot, but mm -hmm. if someone really gravitates to this look, but they want that tone that's gonna to give you kind of the bell-like chime on the high end, that really rich low end, those overtones that are really great, then you've got a fantastic option here with a lot of the modern appointments like the Grover tuners uh, up top and your LR bags pickup in it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the VTC, VTC. Mm -hmm. yeah. Single control right here um, and a great under saddle pickup to boot. So it's a great option. And we're comparing it with a complete tonal variety yeah. uh, because this is very, very different sound-wise in that satin finish because it's otherwise a mahogany spruce hummingbird. Yeah, and it's got, I think it's interesting that they went for no stain 
on the mahogany. I think it's a nice look. Mm -hmm. um, yes, everybody that buys a mahogany guitar, it doesn't look like that, right. you know, before it's finished. But so it's got the light kind of natural mahogany. They might have done something on there, but it looks pretty natural. It looks to like me. it came out of an IKEA catalog. Yeah, you know? it's it's clean. Yeah. it's got that Scandinavian style. Yeah. Um, you know, Sitka spruce top. It's got the same pickguard. The pickguards are different. They are different. They, this has a little bit more to work with there that I think comes from the actual, you know, this is like the... Well, you, here's here's what happened, okay? They they carve these pickguards, right? Or this one's carved. Yeah. This one's not. Yeah. Because rosewood is evidently very expensive. Yeah. And so you get fewer flowers mm -hmm. and you get you don't get a butterfly. My wife would not like this guitar. Yeah. Because it lacks the butterfly. You got to have the butterfly. That's where the tone comes from. And also, <laughs> maybe there's different kinds of pollinators for different species. You know, so we're really getting into the uh These the are the details aspects. that you come to this yeah, channel for. Absolutely. But no, it is. I mean, it's it's a hummingbird pick guard, but it's not a hummingbird pick guard. I mean, yeah. they are very different. Shapes there, but some of the details. Also, the body depth. Mm-hmm. It's got the thickness. Yeah, I don't know why for the studio they go with rosewood, which gives you that bass and chime, and, and then, then they thin it. Yeah. Um, I, I've never been recording and gone, this is too th too thick. I mean, yeah. I think from a performance standpoint, that would make more sense. Yeah. But for whatever reason, that's what they've done. So this is kind of, what, what is the series from ours? The 16s? It's like the 16. That do the same kinda, thing. So yeah. it's a dreadnought that's really more of like a triple O yeah. kind of depth. Which... In my mind, I think it's more interesting to take a triple O and make a dreadnought depth. Stay tuned for some exclusives down the road. But um, yeah, I think it's interesting and some people that I have talked to on the phone about this guitar and in store really like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a player preference thing. If you want a little less of that, because this is, it's not uncomfortable, but it definitely is a hefty. Well, I was talking to somebody yeah. about it the other day who was, uh, <laughs> it's so funny, he goes, I'm not that tall. I'm about 5'8". I'm like, oh, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, Cooper and I are not that tall. Yeah. And so I think, you know, it does for someone uh, like you and I who aren't yeah. playing in the NBA. Um, it's still a big guitar. You still got that, you know, yeah. big body that you're putting your arm across, but it does sit closer to you. Yeah. So it is a bit more comfortable. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I wonder if this is going to be a more modern trend. We just see more and more kind of slightly thinner guitars. Cost cutting. That. No, <laughs> I don't think that's the case. No, no I, think, I don't think they save much a, for that bit of rosewood. It is, a, I think, a player preference thing. It's actually kind of just got a different like wedge shape to it altogether. Yeah, so, it's very cool. So, I mean, I think that they are both nice options. The big, you know, elephant in the room to me is why would anybody go for anything other than just a standard hummingbird? Yeah. But I think both of these, one, if you like the satin kind of look you like it kind of knocked down like we've been talking about with so many different brands doing this but you still want the mahogany tone this is a no-brainer but so many people have been accustomed to thinking that spruce rosewood is the apex of you know tone wood combinations and for a lot of people it is yeah um so if you are jealous at all the gibsons that you know are primarily spruce mahogany you've got you know the same tone in different clothes um, if you know, if you catch my drift, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I got to play both of these. They both sound good, but they sound radically different. Interesting. So, yeah. Well, so put your ears on, listen very closely, and see if you can hear the differences. Let's check it out.
Well, so there you have it. The hummingbird faded, nay, satin, uh, with the traditional tonewood combination of mahogany and spruce, and a very nice spruce top, by the way, when you were talking about earlier, I noticed. That's got a nice top on it, too. Yeah, this one um, does. Very nice silking that's going on with them. Uh, very different tone wood. So yeah. that's the faded. This is the studio rosewood. Yeah. Thinner rosewood back and sides, giving you a different EQ uh, to the guitar. Yeah. So as you were playing it, what were you picking up on on the differences between them? Well, you know, this one definitely darker tone, and I'm not just saying that because the wood is darker. Um, it immediately had less of the kind of bright punch mm -hmm. of that one. That one is a true spruce mahogany mid-range monster, it jumps right out at you. This one has that rosewood kind of depth and richness, which I like, but I think that there's part of that body depth that goes into, it's not as boomy, it's mm -hmm. not like this huge boasting tone, um, but it, it does sound deeper to me. And I failed to mention this one does have the same LR Bags pickup as you saw in the demos. We didn't plug them in and you know compare them that way. And I think in this case, it's necessary because Pickups, they add a little something. Mm -hmm. This, you can really hear, um, you know, the tonal differences in the EQ, but also this one seemed really louder to me, much yeah. louder. Um, and I think part of that's the tone wood combination, maybe the depth, the depth but yeah. the finish. I mean, we've been talking about all these satin guitars. I think that it does have something to do with it, like letting it breathe a little bit more. It just feels like it immediately pops out. Yeah, you know, it's it's... To your point, it's something we've been repeating. There's two primary reasons to do this. One, you can build the guitar a little bit faster, potentially, with a nitro satin finish. Um, keep it thin, let it breathe. You'll be able to make the guitar a little bit quicker, which is why it's available for a little bit less money, because mm -hmm. it, it gets out of the, the shop faster. Um, but the guitar is going to be more resonant. The thicker the finish is, the less resonant the instrument's going to be because it's going to be like a blanket hampering on there, you know? Yeah. Um, and some nitro finishes are very, very thin. I think in another video I confessed, one time I was doing a repair on an old Martin and, um, you know, using blue tape, you know, not very tacky, yeah. just to mask an area off to make sure that it didn't get cracked and carefully pulling away that blue tape, it peeled away finish that I had to fix. Yeah. And that finish is just like, paper thin yeah yeah you know, i think when we talk about thinness or thickness sometimes it, you know if you compare it to like an overseas guitar those could be like millimeters thick you know if yeah. you ever get a break or some crack in a finish on on something that came from overseas and peel it off it's a chunky piece of like candy looking yeah you know like finish but and on these eat it. It, yeah. yeah then you eat it and then you get all the superpowers um and can see all the colors but in this case it really is super super thin just really enough to seal the wood and allowing yeah. it to be very resonant. I will say a couple notes. One, the finish on this guitar, obviously this is the gloss nitro. Um, you can really see a lot of poor stuff in there. Like mm -hmm. it's, it is very thin and I like that. And I like seeing on a pretty piece of rosewood like that, mm -hmm. like as thin as possible, even if it's gloss. So I do like that, but I appreciate on the faded series, um, the natural tops. I think that they look really nice because you mm -hmm. get a nice spruce top like that. You kind of want to be able to see all of it. They do have the like the burst on the J45, but I've kind of gravitated more towards this one, the J35, like some really clean looking. Yeah. And I assume this also will it'll age nicely, you know, pick up some of that wear. It's the closest thing you can get to just not having anything on the wood, really. Yeah. Well, probably not. Years ago, they did that kind of like the, wax finish yeah. thing, which was very resident, but it was rough. I, at the end, I was just wasn't a fan. It was a little too natural, you know? It's weird how some of the experiments actually get out into the market, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so very different sounds, um, yeah. very different experiences in playing. You asked the question, are, who are they for? And yeah. I, I think... This is for the buyer who wants like, to push the envelope musically as far as an instrument in a traditional guitar. So if it's someone who was already wanting a hummingbird, yeah, you know, willing to get a deal and also get something that's arguably better as a guitar, yeah, that's who this is for. And I think this is for the traditional kind of like songwriter person, yeah. but that wants that aesthetic 
that yeah. the songwriter doesn't have. And I think that's smart that Gibson did that. I think the songwriters are some of their best guitars that they have. The EC model, mm -hmm. the non-EC model, the burst, the not burst, or natural, as you would say. <laughs> um, yeah, I think some of those, they sound the best and they're the most versatile and more people are picking up on them. But a lot of times with Gibson, as many people know, you want the J45 look, the Hummingbird look, the Dove look, I mean, the SJ. They're such iconic visual experiences that this will help you get a different kind of sound if that's what you're going for, but preserve the look, which is smart. That's smart that they did it. Absolutely. Well, both great guitars, very different flavors. Curious to hear what your opinion is and which one you gravitate to, so let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you want information about either of these instruments or anything else from Gibson Guitars, you can go to our website, which is... alamomusic.com. Very good, very good. Thank you. See all the photos there. You can chat with someone live and get your questions asked, answered um, so that you can find the right guitar to suit your needs because um, that's what we are here for is to do these videos to kind of help you sort through what's out there, help you ex understand the differences between the guitars and find the guitar that's right for you so you can make music with it. So if you're new to the channel and you like that idea, make sure that you subscribe, you turn on notifications, you like our videos, and you keep coming back for more, and we'll keep making them for you. See you next time. Thank you.